Let us review the events that led up to the United States effectively declaring war on the Assad government in Syria for a, a second time today, <clears throat> wherein they said they would provide lethal assistance to the rebels. In the time follow, uh, prior to this period, we saw, uh, well, let's first look at the background. The background is that every war that the U.S. has launched, every destabilization mission that was of note, involved atrocities rumors. And unfortunately, all of these have proven false in the major conflicts that we've actually engaged ourselves in. The last one was, of course, we all know about the WMDs in Iraq and the fact that none were discovered. Uh, however, in Libya, people still are unaware that all of the initial atrocities charges, Viagra rape, mercenary use, were disproven. For somebody to be defined as a mercenary, they have to earn contractor rates. So American uh, uh, contractor companies uh, actually would qualify by the legal definition of mercenaries in many cases. However, if you're working at normal army wages and you're a foreigner, that is not considered a mercenary. Presumably, the French Foreign Legion would fall into this example. And Gaddafi had something called an African Legion that he'd had for 15 years or so. So the initial claims that went into Libya uh, turned out to be false and were never updated in the press nor was the fact that Libya had the highest standard of living in Africa. The best education actually was higher than the U.S. in certain respects about homelessness uh, and average education level by a hair was higher in Libya than in the U.S. according to United Nations information, which you can find on, on my website, Microtopia, uh, if you're not in the U.N. anymore now that Libya has fallen. But I believe you can show the Human Development Index rates on Libya. I wonder how they're going to try to spin them uh, to not show a huge collapse after the revolution. Hopefully, for the sake of Libyan people, there won't be a huge collapse in human development metrics. But in Libya, people that uh, are being thrown out of their houses that were given to them during the Gaddafi era, era by former capitalist property owners prior to the 69 revolution. So in the case of Syria, we see this issue of Assad being charged with chemical weapons use. I caution you to be very, very careful about taking these claims on face value. The U.S., there's uh, Assad would have every incentive not to do this. He has enough conventional means to fight the rebels. Additionally, there was a poll announced of a thousand participants uh, in Syria, which indicated that only 10% supported the rebels. Now, I'm not suggesting that's the numbers you're going to see overall. So what I wanted to show you is the Middle East. The purple countries, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and actually, if we look in here, we're going to see a place called uh, Azerbaijan. This is a country of Azerbaijan. And um, these are the countries that uh, have a majority or, or near majority of Shia, which are the, uh, the Assad uh, government is a, uh, Assad family is a Shia family. And then Bahrain has a sizable Shia population, around half the population. So, um, let's see here. So, let's save as Shia. So, what we saw in the days leading up to this announcement. So, let me repeat. Assad would not want to provoke American intervention. So, he would have no incentive to use chemical weapons. If there were any chemical weapons used, it would have been... Uh, most likely not with Assad's consent or anyone at the top levels. And it uh, can easily be a false flag attack. So the uh, burden of proof is extremely high considering Libya and Iraq uh, both had incorrect figures for those things. So the architects of the Libya invasion were Samantha Powers, Susan Rice, and Hillary Clinton. So it's interesting to note that Rice has been renominated NSA effective July 1st, uh, National Security Advisor. Samantha Powers has been nominated to be the United Nations Ambassador. And uh, Hillary Clinton's husband, Bill Clinton, yesterday uh, was chummy with John McCain about the issue of uh, Syria. He said, uh, I agree with this guy over there and pointed to him and said, it's better for us to get involved than not. Uh, which is incredible when you think of the track record of U.S. military intervention abroad. Of course, these people live in a bubble. 
a bubble uh, where they're in a ruling class, they're exceptional people, they're at the top of society, and they believe they can do no harm. So, so the Clintons seem like almost all-powerful beings. The day before Gaddafi is killed, Clinton ca calls for his capture or killing in Tripoli, which was a shocking thing to do, to call for the killing of Gaddafi in Tripoli. And then Bill Clinton gestures at John McCain, and the next day Obama is arming the Syrians. My name is Alexander Hagan. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company. Previously, I was a financial analyst and financial journalist. Good night and good luck.